Namaskar, I am Priya here. Today I am going to deal with individual counselling, group counselling, group versus individual counselling. Counselling is one of the distinct profession that has been developed in 20th century. It is unique dynamic process in which helps to grow positive thoughts in clients by building confidence. It is a simple way counselling is nothing but when a person or client approaches another per person for a help or advice for his day-to-day -day problems. It is the focus of assisting an individual from her problems in daily living. Counselling is a helping profession that underlines the role and function of the counsellor in today's society. A helping profession is one who are especially trained under licensed or certified to execute unique role or service to the human beings who are in a problem. These helping professions may include law, education, psychology, family and societal works. Objectives To understand the meaning and purpose of counselling To know about individual and group counselling To identify the qualities of a counsellor To learn about steps in counselling process Now we will move on to definitions Counselling is a process in which clients learn how to make decisions and formulate new ways of behaving, feeling and thinking. Counsellor focus on the goals of their clients wish to achieve. Clients present levels of functioning and the changes that must be made to achieve personal objectives. Thus, counselling involves both choice and change evolving through distinct changes such as exploration, goal settings and actions. Counselling usually deals with an individual, personal, social, vocational, educational and empowerment concerns. Counselling areas may be related to interpersonal and intrapersonal concerns which are related to school, college, personal adjustments, mental health, education, marriage and family issues, ageing, employment and rehabilitation. Now let's see how counselling for young children are different. Counselling for young children will differ from counselling for adults and it depends on the child's age, type of difficulties and their developments. For every problem, different methods may be used to encourage the children to be able to express their difficulties such as play and art. For example, during story selling session, while taking, uh, talking about the feelings of a character, child also put his own feelings and will help him to express his emotions through drama, story, drawing, painting and so on. This type of methods will make a counsellor a great insight into the conscious mind of the child. Older children may prefer talking therapy or mixture of both and counselling approach will always depend on a specific of individual even though different methods may be used for children, child's counselling. But the aim of counselling for both children and adults is ultimately the same, which helps the individual to cope better with their emotions and feelings. Now let's know about how counselling benefit young people. Counselling to the young children and children involves helping a child to develop positive attitude towards their life recognize their strengths and express their emotions. It doesn't involve decision making for a child but imposing beliefs on them or campaigning. Counseling may be provided to children and young people on their own or it may be provided to as a child, as a part of family. This may be a family counseling. Do you want to know what are the child related issues? These are the child related issues. Family and step family relations, bullying, bereavement or loss, emotional problems, behavioral problems, school issues, infatuation, literacy and numerical problems. To solve all these issues, counsellors need many years of practice and should have required qualification to accomplish. However, anyone in spite of qualifications or training can become a more effective assistant by learning to apply basics of counselling techniques. Now we will see who are all child counsellors. Child counsellors are those who assist the children who are having personal or psychological problems. These counsellors possess certain qualities or characteristics. If they possess these characteristics, they can be called as an effective counsellor. Now we will see who are all professional counsellors. Professional counsellors are those who distinguish from those who may use 
the term counselor professional counselors are the full time dynamic representatives of their vocation and accept the role and responsibility of a professionalism a licensed professional counselor is characterized by these things in that first one having the primary duty and responsibility of providing specific licensed professional counseling to deal with personal social emotional physical issues and needs of an individual the second one is functioning as a source of education in a variety of settings such as building confidence time management stress management coping skills mental health awareness and so on the third one is performing as the primary contributor in crisis behavioral intervention services and other major crisis situations now we will see qualities of a counselor the first quality is patience as a counselor we need to have patience with our child as they process the conversation it may take time to acknowledge certain things and to move towards positive changes sometimes people may discuss about something several times before they are ready to make a move in a particular direction also we may not expect to see great changes in an individual child therefore we must accept the inter- integral process in their lives and be happy over small victories the second character is good listener being a counselor they should spend most of their time to listen to the clients because the clients will be expressing their problems and the counselor has to listen to them rather than talking counselor must give time to his client to express their feelings emotions and time to their all stories in a clear way the third character is compassionate it is very essential that every client should feel counselor's compassion for their problems and client how to sense as a counselor is truly changing about them counselor may not be able to relate about every issues that is shared with them but they need to be able to have concern for how it feels to be in their shoes honest concern produces positive results non judgmental a counselor also has to listen all types of information from their client whether it is private or general they must give better solution for the client problems and to communicate positive regard counselor should be ready to spare time to judge a particular behavior and is very much essential to understand them but client must not feel that counselor are judging them likewise they must come across children of different problems culture tradition religion and it should not push their cultural or religious views for a counselor multicultural competency is very much essential the counseling environment should always provide a secure place for the clients to share their utmost personal experiences or personal concerns the next one is research oriented being a counselor they have to involve a considerable amount of time spent for researching counselor should have current knowledge about the existing research in order to help the clients and to extend the counselor's knowledge counselor knowledge can be enhanced by personal research and also they can start a counseling to the client personally the next one is empathetic empathy is the ability to recognize and share the feelings of others counselor need to be able to put themselves in the shoes of their client and understand the situation from their point of view even if counselor doesn't agree with their perspectives they still need the ability to understand how it feels to them in order to deal with the problem however it is important that they should not be able they should not be too empathetic some people struggle as counselors because they are unable to maintain the objectivity and therefore carry home their emotional problems or stress to the home the next one is discreet maintaining secrecy is the utmost important when they when we are a counselor one must be able to maintain confidentiality so the client can be able to trust counselor with their utmost personal issues the next one is encouraging giving confidence and encouragement is the most important for a counselor most of the client will be struggling to discover trust in their circumstances the major role of a counselor is often in inculcating hopes in discouraging and depressed personalities the next one is self aware 
whatever the counselor feelings are they must be able to keep their feelings out of the session and they do this only if they have self awareness self awareness helps the counselor to know their own fears insecurities and weaknesses and this will be help in therapeutic relationships this quality help this help the uh, counselor to solve their own problems and also can use that skill to help the clients in different situations the next one is authenticity authenticity can also be called as genuineness this is very much important when working with the clients they will guess whether counselor is genuine or fake but clients will not open or trust until counselor advice is genuine this is even more crucially essential when working with the teenage groups the next one is purpose of counseling effective counseling consists of absolutely planned permissive relationship which allows the client to expand understanding of him to a degree which enables him to take a positive steps in the light of his new direction the aim of counseling is not to resolve one particular problem but to assist the individual to grow so that one can hope with the present problem and with the later problems in a better incorporated manner the next one is therapy therapy is not an issue of doing something to do the children or of suggesting him to do something for himself it is an another word for a matter of freeing the child for normal growth and development and also for removing obstacles so that the child can again progress ahead now we will see what are all the steps in counseling there are different steps in the counseling process according to rogers they have summarized as follows in that first one is when children or client comes for help which means he has taken a conditional step second one is the helping circumstance is usually defined he is made of conscious at once that the counselor doesn't have the answers the client is simply helped to work out his own answers third one is the counselor engages an open expression of feelings in in regard to the problems he tries to keep from overcrowding the cause of aggression and anxiety the feelings of concern and also a guilt the counselor doesn't attempt the influence of the client that he is wrong or right he accept him as he is he merely tries to give confidence to express himself the fourth one is the counselor accepts recognizes and clarifies the client negative emotions the counselor should respond to the feelings of the child not to the rightness or wrongness of the situation or confidence taken by the client he tries to express himself and also clarifies it without any expressive sympathy the next one is when the children negative emotions have been quite fully expressed they are followed by the faint or tentative expressions of the positive impl- impulses that helps for the developments the next one is the counselor agrees and recognizes the positive feelings which are expressed by the children in the same manner in which he has accepted and recognized by the negative emotions the next is this results is an understanding insight into the self and an acceptance of the self this provides the basis in which the client can go ahead with the new levels of incorporation the initiation by the individual or eminent but extremely significant positive events the client is not urged he is still in merely accepted and being encouraged the progress of further insight a more complete and truthful understanding this is the further component of the growth increasingly incorporated positive actions and the last one is a feeling of increased freedom of decreased need for help let's move on to the individual counseling individual counseling during the early days of counseling movement has been defined as the center activity through which all other activities become significant counseling is one to one helping association that focus on individual growth adjustment problem solving and decision making requirements it is a client center process that demands confidence 
and also this process is initiated when a state of psychological contact or association is established among the counsellor and the client. This progresses as a certain conditions essential to the success of the counselling process. Most of the practitioners believe that these include counsellor genuineness, respect for the client and empathetic understanding of the clients is the internal structure of reference. Effective counselling requires counsellor to have not only the utmost levels of training and professional skills but also certain personality characteristics. Counselling programs will experience a effectiveness and sincerity unless counsellors exhibit understanding, warmth, humanness and positive attitude towards humanity. This process brings relationship and communications based from which the client can develop understanding, explore possibilities and instigate changes. In this setting, the counsellor's ability to make positive outcome is very much essential. The counsellor skills and knowledge provide suitable framework and directions that maximize the client potential for optimistic results. Now we will see what are all the counselling goals. The first one is providing information. Second goal is helping the client. A porcelain eyelet and the fiber is reeled onto your veins. The fourth one, client enthusiasm. The fifth one, giving support. And the last one, educating the client. Individual psychology is often called as Adlerian therapy, which sees the individual host holistically and focuses on the uniqueness of the individuals. This theory has been referred as socio-etiological for its viewpoint of the individuals constantly motivated to attain their goals. Adler also stressed out the importance of developing the client's social interest and re-educating the clients so that they can live in society as one who gives to as well as receives from the society. Adlerian counselling process involves four stages. The first one is establishing relationship, diagnosis, interpretation and reorientation. In the first stage, the counsellor establishes a good relationship or rapport with the client through the interview in which client is helped to feel the comfortable, acceptable, appreciated and cared about. The client is motivated to explain his needs and problems and also asked to discuss about his life tasks. The diagnostic stage involves the standard of living, interview, formal assessment procedure about the family patterns, parents, siblings and recurring dreams. In the interpretation phase, the counsellor and client develops insight from the lifestyle interview into the client's crucial mistakes by analysing the convictions, goals, activities that the client developed by the earlier stage. In reoriation stage, the therapist helps counsellor to move from intellectual insight to the actual development and expression of their healthier attitudes and behaviours. Perhaps this is the most critical stage. Here, client with his counsellor support, encouragement and direction actively pursues changing negative emotions into positive feelings as well as for him and also to the society. In today's concept of the world, Adlerian counselling is very much important and has been utilised in working with the teens, children, family, divorce and remarriages. Now let's move on to the group counselling. It is the regular adjustment or developmental experiences provided in a group or surroundings. Group counselling focus on assisting counsellee to deal with their day-to-day -day adjustments and developmental aspects. For example, behavioral modifications, developing personal relationship skills, career decision making and also to problem solving. Counselling is usually popular in agency and institutional settings and has been utilized somewhere though not frequently as group guidance in school settings but also while in group psychotherapy it may be used commonly in clinics, agency, industries and organizational settings. Now we will see what are all the theoretical consideration. In group counselling, there are popular theoretical orientations which helps in counselling process. In that first one is 
Individual or adlerian group leaders are direct and active in group process while identifying that group members can decide what to do for themselves. The group settings can be a safe opportunity for members to inspect themselves and also to develop self-respect and to improve their social interactions to expand their potentials. Client-centered counselors are always will have active involvement in group counseling. Karl Rogers joined in his beliefs about human behavior with his observations of therapeutic groups of formulate his thoughts of group counseling and group therapy. Client-centered counseling helps the individual to have natural tendency to progress themselves. But group counseling provides such an atmosphere in which members feel secure to reveal their problems and needs for their improvement and further enhancement. Group leader also contributes to enhance positive group environment and overall group process. Reality oriented groups give caring environment in which clients always feel valuable and safe enough to explore satisfying behavior. Here, counselor acts as a teacher in leading group members to adopt more appropriate behaviors and also to create more practical course. The next one is Principles of Group Counseling Group Counseling is not a team support. The goal is not to win the group but to accomplish the goals and also to meet the needs and to provide an experience of value to the individual members and also to the represented groups. Following are the some of the points in which Group Counseling offers. In that first one is individual be able to explore with the reinforcement of a support group, their development and modification needs, concerns and problems. Group counseling may provide the client an opportunity to gain insight into his own emotions and feelings and also the behavior. Group counseling helps the clients with an opportunity to develop positive, natural interaction with the others. Group counseling provides opportunities for clients to learn responsibility to themselves and with the others. Now we'll see how to select the group members, that is selection of group members. Even though group counseling focuses on the needs of an individual, the importance of group relationship to the achievements and adjustment of the different people in the group cannot be overlooked. Following are the possible criteria for the selection of the group members. These are common interest, self-referred or volunteer participation, readiness to participate in the groups, ability to involve in the group process. Now we will see how we can distinguish between group and individual counseling. Group counseling. It involves counselor to work in group members, but in individual counseling, it always allows the counselor to work in isolated issues. Group counseling, it provides members with the opportunities to learn with from other people and to be able to understand own patterns and thoughts and behaviors of others. But in individual counseling, the client's thoughts and behaviors may not be distorted and compared with the groups but counseling in a several pattern and thoughts and behaviors from other group members making choices and decision making. Group counseling. The counselor caters to many number of clients but in individual counseling the counselor always caters only to one client. In group counseling insufficient group member movement and involvement and it is difficult to apply one treatment for groups since the other people may see attitudes and behavior patterns that are limiting and difficult to see in self. But in individual counseling, only one client will be involved in and the information gathered is easier for the counselor to figure out and can be able to apply all types of treatment approach and is most useful to the client. The next one. Group counseling, the client can be able to generate ideas from other members pattern and, uh, on, and their thoughts and behaviors if others have similar issues and experiences which could help him to make better choices and decision making. 
but in individual counseling the client may not be able to generate ideas from other members pattern and thoughts and behaviors as an individual therapy because this include the client choices vary solely from the client itself in group counseling william glasser choice theory is applicable in group counseling wherein group may be able to make effective choices and take greater responsibility but in individual therapy the client has the power to change his life for the better based on the choices what he make in group counseling it enables member to experiment and work towards improved attitudes and the ways of coping with the stress a better group may also be helpful to the individuals with relationship concern and general difficulties in dealing with the other people but in individual counseling individual therapy only can be included in client choice in group counseling person's behavior is inspired by an outside stimulus if others have similar issues and experiences which could help him to make better choices and decision making but in individual counseling person's behavior is not inspired by an outside stimulus next group counseling in group therapy on the other hand involves simultaneous interactions with the people typically outside the client's social and familial network and also relative strangers in individual counseling the highly personal nature of the exchange between the therapist and the client allows for the specific focus on the issues presented the cost of group therapy is usually less but in individual therapy it is maximum to the higher level it will take these are all the difference between group and individual counseling now students you can able to identify what do you mean by group counseling what is individual counseling what is the difference between group and individual counseling and what are all the steps to be followed while taking counseling and what are the principles of counseling sessions thank you we'll see you in the next session